Hey guys and welcome to the school station. In today's video I'm going to be talking about powers of 10 in standard form. This is from the Ed Excel GCSE Maths 9 to 1 paper from the unit number. In today's video I'm going to be talking about powers of 10 in standard form. These may be known as very easy topics but we also have to memorize some very important facts and understand the processes of how to um, solve questions involving this topic. So before we actually get started, I just wanted to go through a rule of standard form. So standard form basically is a times 10 to the power of b, where a is a number between 1 and 10. So basically, standard form is whenever we actually have a number, for example, let's say 0 0.03, it can't, that's not actually standard form. Standard form is when a, whereas it's just a number between 1 and 10, times 10 to the power of something. So what we have to do is we actually have to do 3. We actually have to find the number that is going to, from 0 0.03, where the decimal point can actually be after a number that is between 1 and 10. So 0 0.03, 0 0.3, if we, if we multiply 10 to 0 0.03, it's going to be 0 0.3, and that's still not a number between 1 and 10. But if we multiply by 100 from 0 0.03 we realize it's actually by 3 so 3 times 10 to the power of um, maybe minus 2 that is going to be a in standard form so basically standard form is a times 10 to the power of p where a is a number between 1 and 10 we just have to make sure that there is it's always a number between 1 and 10 and then with b we can go back spaces or we can go front which we're going to be looking at today. Something else you also have to memorize for your GCC exam is actually the table of prefixes. These table of prefixes are basically all the prefixes that you have to know for the exam. So the prefix for example we might you might have heard some of these prefixes before. For example in computers we might actually have seen gigabytes before or terabytes or megabytes um, and you will also see that it can sometimes be represented using this letters in shorter form. But you all together, you just have to know these powers and these numbers. So 10 to the power of 12 is basically uh, 1 with 12 zeros because this number, this small number, tells us how many times to jump the decimal point in a way. So um, 10 just by itself is basically just like that. And then we have to, um, so from 1, we have to basically use the decimal point and just keep jumping 12 spaces okay so we just go through and do this along when it gets to minus one we have one and that the decimal point after the one and we just basically minus one means go back one so if we jump the decimal point and it becomes a 0 0.1 so that's basically what we'll have to know that the decimal point can basically jump so I really recommend you guys to practice these and make sure they understand the 10 to the power of 12 means like making the decimal point jump 12 spaces while 10 to the power of minus 6 means um, making the decimal point jump backwards my 6 spaces okay so re remember to actually memorize this table of prefixes so now we're going to go on to the examples of today's video. The first example is to find the value of 10 minus 3. Okay, so this is something we've actually learned in our zero negative and fractional indices video. So I want you guys to pause this video and have a go. Alright guys, hope you guys have tried it out and here is the answer. So 10 minus 3 over here is actually you have to know that whenever there is actually a number with a power that is negative you basically have to turn it into a fraction so 10 to the power of minus 3 means 1 over 10 to the power of 3 because this 1 over basically just cancels out that negative sign so it becomes 1 over 10 to the power of 3 we know that 10 to the power of 3 is 1000 so it's going to be 1 over 1000 and if you want to simplify this into a decimal you can do 0 0.001 and that is our answer the value of 10 to the power of minus 3 is 0 0.001 or 1, to 1 over 1000 any of the answers are correct. Now I'm going to go on to example 2. Example 2 is asking us to write these measurements in meters. A. The size of the influenza is about 1.2 something and a fingernail grows about 0 0.9 nm every second. Okay so right now I know that you guys might be really baffled but do not worry I'm going to show you guys a little trick just before answering this question. So I told you guys to memorize this table of prefixes and if we look over here through the letters the first question actually told us that it's 1.2 this weird letter and we don't really know what this is. If we go through our table of prefixes we will find this over here and this is actually micro okay. So 
what this really means is the size of the influenza is about one about 1.2 micrometers and a fingernail grows about 0 0.9 newton meters every second okay so that's basically what you have to really understand and this is what you'll have to um remember that's why you have to remember the table of prefixes because you won't be given that in your exam so i want you guys to pause this video and have a go on writing these measurements in meters and i want you guys to then like you know check your answers Alright guys, hope you guys have tried out, tried this out and here is the answer. So as I said, basically this is micrometers and this over here is N, which stands for nano, okay? So nanometers and micrometers. So we actually have to basically, what we're trying, what, what they're really telling us by writing these measurements in meters is to actually knock out that sign, okay? And how do we knock out that sign? So micrometers, okay, so 0 0.9 nanometers, they're basically telling us it's already in meters, but that nano is basically what is really complicating it. So what we have to do is knock out that nano sign. So what we do is we basically cancel it out. So 0 0.9 nanometers, we know that nano actually means, um, nano is actually 10 to the power of minus 9, okay? So since nano is 10 to the power of minus 9, we basically can put 10 to the power of minus 9 and you'll realize that basically it becomes, it actually cancels out that the n and it will become the answer of in meters because when we cancel the nano out using its power that was given in the table, it basically ends up being in meters. Same like that for the micro, we just basically do micro is, uh, is equal to 10 to the power of minus 6. So how we cancel it out, we basically just do uh, 1.2 times 10 to the power of minus 6. It cancels out that micro and you're left with the meters which is 0 0.000012 meters okay so that's basically how you would solve that question example three write the following numbers in standard form pause this video and have a go when you're ready press play all right guys hope you guys have tried it out and here is the answer this is really, really simple you just have to follow the rule of standard form what you have to do is you have to try to find the number between 1 and 10 in this number. Well, you can't do 580 because that's not between 1 and 10, but you can do 5.8 because that is between 1 and 10. So 5.8, you just place the decimal point over there and then you see how many times it takes to get to the original number. So 5.8, if we put the decimal point here, we would do 1, 2, 3, 4. So 5.8 times 10 to the power of 4 is the answer. For this question, we have 0 0.00000803. Over here, again, what we're doing is we basically try to find the number that is between 1 and 10. So this is over here, 8.03. And you, have, and you have to see how many times you have to go back to get to the original number, which is this number. So we go back six times and the answer is 8.03 times, times 10 to the power of 6. All right, guys, let's go to example four. So write the following as normal numbers. Again, I want you guys to pause this video and have a go. When you're ready, press play. All right, guys, hope you guys have tried it out and here is the answer. So again, what we do is this time we're asked, they're asking us to find it in normal numbers. So we have 2.3 times 10 to the power of 6. So again, what we're doing is, since this is positive, it's telling us to basically move forward. So we're moving the decimal point forward 6 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This gives us this answer over here, which is 2,300,000. For this one, we have 4.75 times 10 to the power of minus 7. So minus 7 is telling us to go make the decimal point go back 7 times. So we have 4.75 over here, and we go back 7 times, and it will give us this answer. Alright guys, let's go on to example 5. This is telling us to work out 3 times 10 to the power 10 squared in brackets times 2 times 10 to the power of 5 in brackets. I want you guys to pause this video and have a go. When you're ready, press play. Alright guys, hope you guys have tried it out and here is the answer. So what do you do in this question, okay? So what you do is you basically get the like terms. This is an ordinary integer, 3, and this is also an ordinary integer, 2. So what we do is we basically use 
the like terms and we put them together. So three times two, we put the like terms together and we also get the like terms of 10 squared and 10 to the power of five. These are also like terms because they both have powers. So three times two in brackets times 10 squared times 10 to the power of five. You basically simplify that. So three times two is six. 10 squared times 10 to the power of five is 10 to the power of seven because you just add the powers together. And six times 10 to the power of seven, we basically have to make the decimal point jump seven places forward and you'll get this answer. So last question of today, this is telling us to work out 9 times 10 to the power of minus 2 in brackets divided by 3 times 10 to the power of minus 6 in brackets. Again, this may be difficult but I want you guys to pause this video and have a go. When you're ready, press play. Alright guys, hope you guys have tried it out and here is the answer. So over here, instead of actually making, you know, just like leaving it the same, we actually have to turn this into a fraction. So we make this division symbol into the line of our fraction, okay? So 9 times 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 3 times 10 to the power of minus 6. So this is basically all into a fraction, okay? So this is a numerator, this is a denominator. So then what we have to do is we basically have to simplify this further. So we actually take this step by step. 9 over 3... If we simplify this, we can do 3 over 1 because 9 divided by 3 is 3 and 3 divided by 3 is 1. So 9 over 3 can be simplified into 3 over 1. 3 over 1 is 3. So this is basically what I wrote over here, 3. 10 to the power of minus 2 divided by 10 to the power of minus 6. When we have actually learned in our previous videos, we have learned that whenever you have two powers and with the same base number, you basically just um, take away the um, powers together. So 3 times 10 to the power of minus 2 minus 6 and minus 2 minus 6 is minus 8. So therefore 3 times 10 to the power of minus 2 minus 6 is 3 times 10 to the power of minus 8. And obviously you can go on and just you know write the original answer but I just wrote down 3 times 10 to the power of minus 8. I left it in standard form but obviously you can just go on and make the decimal point jump 8 places back. So that's basically everything we've learned today in this video. Just an overview of what we've learned today. We have learned the rules of standard form. So standard form is a times 10 to the power of b, where a is a number between 1 and 10. We are also able to learn the table of prefixes. I would definitely recommend for you guys to memorize this. And last of all, we've also able to identify the different types of problems involving standard form and the powers of 10. Hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Give this video a thumbs up if, you, if this helped you. And subscribe to the school station for more free science and maths lessons. Bye, guys.